Hey all, and welcome back to the Fierce Kittens channel this week. We're going to actually do an introduction to bag making by making a very small tote. And this is gonna be a very beginner's project. So it's not gonna include any weird hardware requirements, weird materials like vinyl or whatever, um, no magnets. So uh, the seam is going to be straight, and this is honestly meant to be both a beginner sewing project and an introduction to bag making. So let's get into the uh, materials that you're going to need for this project. For this project, you're going to need half a yard of quilting cotton weight fabric. You're gonna need another half a yard of the same quilting cotton weight fabric for your lining. For interfacing, you're going to need one yard of a lightweight woven interfacing like Pellon Shape Flex 101, or in this project, we're actually going to use Woven Fuse 2 from GotInterfacing.com. You're going to need another yard of a fleece interfacing such as Thermolam. It's got a little bit of loft to it and it's gonna go on the outside of the fabric, the exterior rather, um, and that is because it will give it a little bit of body. Otherwise the bag would be really droopy. Of course you're going to need something to cut with, either it be tailor's shears or you get a nice little rotary cutter. Um, you need something to mark with such as tailor's chalk, or one of these Dritz um, soluble pens with the disappearing ink. Clips or pens, depending on how you prefer. Uh, a lot of people will just have pens and that's perfectly fine. Uh, I tend to use Wonder Clips when I clip my fabrics. You'll need an all-purpose thread, such as this Guterman thread, and one yard of a webbing. We're not gonna be making straps. Again, I want this to be a really easy introduction to sewing and also bag making. So just grab one yard of, of cotton or nylon webbing. Make sure it's about one inch wide. You're also going to need some kind of instrument for a straight edge. There's several different kinds of rulers that you can get. I really do prefer my Omni grids because I can see through them and they have markings. I have this longer um, ruler here, but because it has some paper on the back of it, I can't actually see through it. Um, so I will probably be using this Omni grid, which is about six inches wide and 12 inches tall. I tend to use it for card slots, but for this bag today, this will actually do the trick. Again, you don't need anything like this. You can use the edge of a book if you want, um, and you don't even need you know, anything crazy like this cutting mat, just something to give you a straight edge so you can draw out the pattern because it's going to be a really simple rectangle. Last but not least, you're also going to need an iron and an ironing board. Now, if you just saw this thing clamp down and then pop back up, um, just a safety note, I use an Aliso Pro iron, which actually automatically detects if the hand is on the handle or not. And so it will drop down and then push itself up so it doesn't actually sit hot on top of a surface. Not all irons do this, okay? Never leave your iron sitting straight down like this. That is a good safety note for me to make right now because I don't wanna get sued if you set your house on fire for following what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> so please be safe with the iron. They're very hot. So now what we need to do is take your lining fabric and we're going to be making our pattern from the lining fabric. This is a lot easier if you have a solid color for your fabric, but if you don't, don't worry, that's fine. Um, so take your yardage and you're going to fold it in half lengthwise. You may find that you already have a fold mark here from when it was on the bolt. So when we mark the lines with our tailor's chalk or our markers, whichever you chose to use, you'll be cutting through two pieces of fabric and you'll be able to get both of the lining pieces out of that. Now, then you're going to take that and use it as the template for the rest of the pattern pieces. So let's go do that. You're going to draw a 12 inch tall by 11 inch wide rectangle using a straight edge and your marking tool of choice. I have selected to use Taylor's chalk. In the past, it's worked really well for me and it's easy to remove. Sometimes you'll find that the disappearing ink markers don't really disappear as well as they advertise. So we're just gonna go around and sometimes you may even find like in my case, 
the ruler wasn't the exact size I needed, but I did use it to kind of figure out, okay, I needed an extra five and a half inches coming off of the side. So you'll remove that and you'll see that you have a perfectly drawn rectangle. Now you're going to take the cutting tool of choice. I chose to use a rotary cutter today, but you can absolutely use scissors to get the job done as well. You're going to cut around the edge very carefully. And you'll note that especially if you use a rotary cutter, please be careful. I am an idiot and I actually slice toward me. You're technically supposed to slice away from you, but whatever, you know, I don't follow safety standards, anywho. When you're done cutting, you should have two matching rectangles of fabric, and this is gonna be your tote bag's lining. Next, you're going to lay out your exterior fabric and place one of the lining pieces on top. This will be how we use the lining as a template or pattern for the bag. Spread it out nicely so that it lays flat on top of the exterior fabric and cut around the edge. I'm doing this one exterior piece at a time. You may choose to fold the exterior fabric as we did with the lining and cut both exterior pieces at the same time. However, since my fabric has lines and a pretty definite pattern, I felt it was best to do one at a time so I can know that the cut was straight on each piece. Sometimes when you fold it up, it's kind of hard to tell what the underside of the fabric is doing and you end up with one side being all jagged or crooked. So, um, you know, you don't have to do this. It really just depends on your fabric and how you're feeling. Same deal with your woven interfacing. Get it and lay it out. Um, I actually did go ahead and fold the woven interfacing in half. Um, smooth out your fabric and then cut both of your uh, woven interfacing pieces at the same time. Now the last bit you have to cut is the fleece interfacing. Fleece can have quite a bit of loft to it. I don't always like to use my rotary cutter with it as it can be difficult to cut multiple layers on the fluffier interfacing such as Thermalam. This time I reached for my scissors to help do the deed. Carefully cut all the way around the edges to free the fleece interfacing and then you're basically done with the cutting. Now that you have everything cut out for your project, you're going to have to fuse this interfacing to the fabric. Now, as a word of caution, this part can be really annoying. <laughs> and in honesty, this is exactly why I have a steam press. However, I am going to do this at the table. Um, normally, I would recommend using an ironing board. I'm only doing this here for instructional purposes. I do have an ironing board that's behind me but it's kind of bad for camera angles. So I'm gonna show you how to fuse interfacing. So let's go. The first thing you're going to want to do is lay your lining fabric down on the ironing surface, wrong side facing up. Skim over it with the iron to preheat the fabric. This will warm up the fabric and help the interfacing fuse more efficiently, not to mention also get rid of some wrinkles. Then you're going to carefully place the woven interfacing on top of the lining piece, glue side down. Smooth it out to make sure there are no wrinkles. Then you're going to take the iron and not move it over the fabric, but instead set it down and hold it down, pressing your weight into the iron. You're going to do this for about 10 seconds. This timing will vary depending on the type of interfacing you're using, so please make sure to check the sheet of manufacturer's instructions that come with your interfacing. Don't slide the iron over after the 10 seconds have passed. Instead, lift the iron and move it over to the next unfused section. Place the iron down, then press again. You're going to repeat this until you have fused all of the interfacing to your lining. When you're done with fusing this one piece of lining, you're gonna grab the next piece of lining and repeat the same steps with the other remaining piece of the woven interfacing. Next, you're going to take one piece of your exterior fabric and you're going to preheat it with the iron just as you did with all of the other pieces. This does two things, no wrinkles for the front of the bag, but also heating it up prematurely so that you can have a better fuse with the interfacing. Then you're going to take one of the pieces of the fleece interfacing and set it down, glue side down to the wrong side of your exterior fabric. You're going to then place the iron down and press very hard and hold for 10 seconds. This is a hard process. I basically sit there and sweat and struggle 
and kind of want to die a bit. So if you get really into bag making, please consider a heat press, please, because I really can't stand this part. Once you're done with that piece, you get to do it all over again. Next, you're going to take your webbing, whether it be cotton or nylon, and you're gonna fold that yard in half and then cut at the top, and that will give you two very even 17 inch pieces. Now, the other thing is if you are using nylon webbing, you're probably gonna wanna take a lighter and burn the end of it, and that's just going to keep it fused and finished off so it doesn't unravel, because webbing like that tends to unravel. Cotton webbing, no big deal, but with nylon, I highly suggest taking a lighter and just going right over the ends with it. Now you're going to take one of your interfaced exterior pieces and gently fold it in half right sides together. This is going to create a little fold line. You're gonna just finger press it, just, just like this along the top and the bottom, and then unfold it, and you can see just, just right there that little fold line, and you're gonna mark it with some chalk so that you can see. Now, then you're going to take one of your rulers and you're going to place one of the strap ends two inches away from that center line and clip. Being very careful not to twist it, and by this I run my fingers up, take the other end and put it two inches away from the center line on the opposite side. So we'll remove that ruler. We're gonna gently take this and move it off to the side and grab our next exterior piece. Same thing, we're gonna take it, fold it in half, finger press that half fold, and then open it up and mark it. You may find that if you have a lighter fabric, you might not need to mark it. Since my fabric is black, it likes to hide the fold lines. So whatever is easiest for you. And then take your ruler and you're going to place however you like. I've got this nice little four inch wide ruler. And you're gonna go two inches to the left of center. And you're going to clip or pin the strap down and then running your fingers up to make sure you don't accidentally twist it take the other end and put it two inches away but on the other side and then again clip and pin in place now you're going to go to the sewing machine and you're going to set a long stitch length and this is called a basting stitch length and I usually suggest somewhere between five and six millimeters, whatever the longest stitch length is that your machine can handle. Um, and you're going to gently place this up under the foot and just at about a quarter of an inch, you're just going to stitch right over the top of only the portion where the webbing is at. And what this does is it just bastes it temporarily in place. That's the whole purpose of a basting stitch. Is it's just a temporary measure to keep something locked in place so it doesn't wiggle around when you go to do the actual stitch. So we're going to do that for both sides. And a quarter of an inch. Also to note, I am using an industrial machine that is not required for this project. If you were making this out of leather, I might say something, but it's absolutely not necessary. All right, and now we're all basted up and ready to go. Now you're going to take one of your pieces for the exterior and set it down on the table, right side facing up. You're going to take the other piece and place it right side facing down on top of the other piece. Now you'll see that the, the little straps that we put on are kind of fighting with us, but you're just gonna have to work around it. 
You don't be afraid to squish them down or to tug on the fabric. Now, the top edge we're gonna leave open, but we're going to stitch all the way down the left, the bottom, and the right sides, and that will close up what we know as the exterior of the bag. So take clips or pens and go all the way around to secure the seams so that when you're stitching, you don't have issues with the fabric shifting on you. Now go back to your sewing machine. Double check that you have a normal stitch length, which should be roughly three millimeters in length before you get started. Sometimes I have found that I accidentally leave my machine in basting mode, and that's never good. <laughs> so for the main construction of the bag, we're going to use a half inch seam allowance. Most bag patterns will be about 3 eighths of an inch to a half an inch. It gives you a lot of wiggle room, especially as materials get a lot chunkier over time. Um, particularly if you start using foam, you'll find that that's a necessity. So when you're going down, you're going to want to go down a little ways and then go in reverse and go back up and then down. The reason you do that is because it locks your stitches in and it makes it so that it won't fall apart on you. Let your machine guide the fabric through. Don't pull on it, tug at it, or do anything that would cause it to fall apart or yell at you. When you get about a half an inch from the bottom, you're going to make sure your needle is halfway in, lift your presser foot and rotate the fabric so that it is, again, a half an inch away from the edge. So again, what we did was we stitched all the way down that first line. We're gonna stop with the needle halfway in, lift the presser and gently rotate your work around so that you can stitch the bottom without having to stop and restart another seam. This is just a pivot and everybody loves pivoting, right? Except with couches. So then you can actually continue your seam right along this half inch seam allowance. So this will be the bottom of the exterior of your bag. Now we're coming up on the other end, same deal. Half way down with your needle, half an inch away from the edge. You may want to get a ruler, I am eyeballing it. I've been doing this for a really long time and then put the foot down and keep going. Now this will be the opposite side of the bag. When you get to the top, so all the way to the end, and then go backwards and forwards. I know some of you have some more modern machines that will automatically do like a start stop stitch that is not gonna hold when you're making bags. So please learn how to use the reverse feature of your uh, machine. All right. So for lining, we're gonna do things just a little differently this time. You're gonna place your lining down top side, facing of the top there, right side up the bottom of your bag here, <laughs> down at the bottom. I know with it being a rectangle shape, it's kind of difficult, but that's why I didn't do a square. <laughs> you're gonna take the other piece of your lining and you're gonna put it face down. Wrong, uh, wrong side should be up. Wrong side down, wrong side up, and basically right sides together. And smooth it out, make sure your edges are lined up. Now. I'm just going to mark this with a pen. You don't have to do this, but what you're gonna wanna do is have it such that there's a small hole at the bottom of your bag, and you're gonna wanna use that for flipping the bag right side out. And I'm actually, I'm just gonna leave a nice big hole so we don't spend hours trying to birth this bag. If you don't know what I mean by birthing, you're about to find out. And then you're going to clip or pen down the edges leaving that hole open. Now, when you're back at your sewing machine, you're going to go back up to the top edge, uh, half inch seam allowance. Start with a couple of stitches, then go backwards, and then keep going on. And you're gonna go all the way down the side, keeping that half inch seam allowance.
get down to the bottom about a half inch away from the edge, lift your presser foot, and turn your work so that you can work down the other side. Now, this time is different. Instead of stitching all the way down to the end, we're actually gonna stop about where we made that mark. So you're gonna stitch up to that point, and then I want you to stitch backwards and then forwards to the point again to reinforce that seam so it doesn't fall apart while you are trying to birth the bag. Now you're gonna slide your work forward to the other mark and at a half inch away, you're gonna put your needle down and you're gonna stitch forward and then backward and then forward again. Again, that locks your stitches in place. And just like last time, stop about a half inch away, lift your presser foot and pivot around and then work your way to the top. And once you get to the top, Stitch all the way to the end, go in reverse, and then forward again. You only have to reverse a couple of stitches. All it's going to do is lock that thread in so it can't get away from you or start unraveling and falling apart. All right. Now that everything is sewn, what I like to do is actually just trim down all of this excess. And you're probably thinking, well, why do you even have that kind of excess? Why don't you just use a smaller stitch length? And again, on a bag like this, not entirely necessary to reduce the, the not the stitch length, but the, the uh, seam allowance. Um, but as you move up in bag materials like foam and vinyl and leather, uh, you're gonna really be happy that you have that much wiggle room to work with. But at least for these kinds of bags, I like to trim away at least half of that seam allowance. So trimming it down from a half inch to a quarter inch and it reduces the bulk in your seams. And in general, this is a good practice to do. So we're starting with the lining for this and I'm gonna go down either of the sides of the bag and just trim away there first. And here's where it gets tricky. I actually like to leave the half full half inch at the bottom. So right at the hole, I'm gonna taper away from it and only snip away the part that had been sewn. I am also going to clip the corner, which will make it easier to lay flat when I flip it right side out. Same thing for the other side of the hole. We're gonna cut at a taper and trim away the excess and clip the corner. Being careful, of course, not to clip through your seam. You definitely don't wanna do that. Always keep a clean workspace. I'm gonna get rid of all of that excess and move that. I'm gonna set my lining to the side and we're gonna do the same thing with the exterior. So I'm gonna trim away a quarter inch. Now on this one, we can actually trim it away all the way around. Just love that scissor ASMR <laughs> clip. And again, just like on the lining, just a gentle clip at the corners. Whoops, there we go. Okay, and keeping the workspace clean. All right, now we've got everything trimmed down and cleaned up. So here's the fun part. We're gonna take our lining and we're gonna take our exterior and we're gonna put them together. But first you have to take your exterior and flip it right side out. Now you can take the back of a pencil like an eraser or you can use the, you can very gently use the tip of a pen tip uh, uh, of a pencil as well, uh, you know, whatever. I actually have like a point turning tool that I like to use and it's just bamboo and I just take it in there and just very gently brush up against the corners to make sure that they've come out. And that, that part of clipping the corner there was what made that kind of be able to do what it's doing now, which is folding all the way out. Had I not clipped it, it would be a ball of fabric in there. So I just gently brush up inside. All right, we're gonna take the fabric of the exterior Looks like my, my basting stitch didn't stick with that one. 
that's fine. I'll just clip it. If that happens to you, just clip it down. It's totally fine. I don't know why it didn't stay. So I'm just going to clip them now just to be safe because reasons. All right, now you're going to take your exterior, which should be right side out, and you're going to shove it into your lining, which should be wrong side out. So what will end up happening is these will be touching right sides together. You're going to put them in. You just kind of have to shake and jiggle and beat it into submission. Just pull it down in there. It doesn't have to be pretty right now. But the important thing is to make sure that the side seams line up. Uh, one thing sometimes I will suggest, especially for people who are using domestic machines, is to get into the habit of folding your seams, like your seam allowance, away from each other. So it, if you put them facing the same side like that, then it's a lot more bulk for your machine to handle, especially if it's a domestic that's a smaller beginner machine. So if you fold them opposite of each other, then that's a really helpful tool. So then you're going to place clips or pens to hold everything down. Same thing, other side. So we're getting over here and we're going to flip down, fold down the, uh, the seam allowance so that they're facing away from each other and make sure that the way you're folding it matches the other side as well. So I've got both of these guys facing the same direction. You'd be shocked, but it actually does make an impact. And it does show when you flip the bag right side out, you can actually tell that they were folded differently. All right. Now we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way around this top edge. And again, because we left that hole at the bottom, we'll be able to fix this and put it right side out when we're done. Now that we're back at the machine, you're going to put your work under the foot. And I always suggest starting at one of the side seams of the bag or any seam, especially if it has more. Sometimes bags do. We're going to do, again, another half inch seam allowance. I'm going to go ahead and start by putting my needle halfway down into the work. You're going to stitch a couple of lines and then go backwards. And that will finish off the seam. And then we're going to stitch all the way around the top, careful to leave your only your work that needs to be under the needle and the needle. If you're using a domestic machine that has a free arm, you don't have to sew in the flat like I'm doing. You could actually just kind of go around from the top edge here and around that arm. Um, but since I'm using a flatbed, I can't really do that. I do, I do miss that. <laughs> now when you get to the webbing, it might be useful for you to go backwards over the, the edge on either side of it. And that will also further lock it into place. And continue stitching around. As you come to the seam, just go very slowly and hold it down on both ends so it doesn't kind of fold up on itself. Now we're on the other side of the bag and there's one of the straps so we're going to stitch backward on either end and lock it into place. There we go and more. And there's the other strap. It kind of got away from me. And we're coming up on the end. You want to go very slowly for this stitch, very slowly to line it up with the original seam. Now, don't forget to lock it. So press backwards and go forward. And clip your seams. Ta-da! You have a bag, but not really, not yet. So what you need to do now is you're going to want to trim the top, but don't trim the straps, all right? So 
you're going to trim everything away except for the strap area. So again, kind of like I had to do with the bottom here, I taper away from the straps and just trim down that section that's in between all the strapping. The reason you don't want to do that is because you want to have that excess in the strap just in case. Um, it makes it a little easier to bear a load. Now this is a, sm a rather small sample bag. Um, that's just an example for you for how to, how to even get started in bag making and as a beginner sewing project. But um, just as good practice so you know, those are lo load bearing seams. And so you want to kind of leave as much excess as you can with those. There you go. It's not as much of a concern for the base of the bag. And that is part because you actually have two seams that are kind of helping to bear the load. You've got the lining first, which is your first line of defense. And then you've got the exterior. That's your, your main and secondary line of defense for load bearing. Okay, and one more, just taper it, and we've already tapered there, and cut away, being careful. Now, I've been sewing for a very long time, so I'm the kind of idiot that puts my fingers right next to the scissors. You probably shouldn't do that. I'm sure that like a few people are cringing and just waiting <laughs> for, me to, for me to cut something. Trust me, I'm fine. All right, now we've got everything trimmed down. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna birth the bag. So <laughs> reaching into the hole here, grab the exterior and kind of tug it out a little bit. Now, what I like to tell people is don't yank that fabric through because again, like you never know, once you get to doing zippers and leather and vinyl, you could really mess something up. The better way to do it is to start to take the lining and to roll it kind of like pantyhose <laughs> or socks <laughs> or compression sleeves anyway and just roll it outward like that pushing with your thumbs to get the exterior to pop out and again this is like a super simple bag example for you so you won't have to worry about that too much now just like we had to do with the exterior you're gonna need to poke out the corners here and again, just so I can demonstrate, you can do this with like the end of a pen. You don't have to have some fancy device. It does help though to have something with a pointed edge, but it has to be blunt. Like I actually would not go in there with scissors. You could, but I wouldn't. All right, so now you're like, well, what do we do with the hole? Well, there's two things that you can do with this. You can, you can fold it down and decide to hand stitch it shut if you want. But the thing that I like to tell people is that, especially if it's in the bottom of the bag or even in the, just in the lining in general, if anybody notices that you have a stitch in there that's an eighth of an inch top stitch, then you did something wrong with the outside of the bag. So in that case, we're gonna sew it shut. So you're gonna take that half inch seam allowance that you left in place, and see now you're gonna be thankful that you left it, and you can finger press it down. That helps, sometimes I like to steam it shut but you're gonna fold it down so that the right sides are touching each other. And then you're going to clip that down. And I usually do the opposite ends and then work my way toward the center and adjust as needed. So again, folding each side over so right sides are touching at the seam and clip in place or pen, whatever suits you. Again, like this is a quilting cotton that's been backed with woven fuse too. So it's gonna kind of listen to me. If you start using stuff like the waterproof canvas as your linings, then you have to steam it because otherwise it just doesn't do what it needs to. Then you go back to the machine. Okay, so now we have stitched shut the hole and we have the exterior. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna take the lining and just kind of gently roll it down into the exterior of your tote bag. And you're pushing those corners in, just kind of get it all set up. And now you're like, whoa, it's done, it's totally done. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry to be a killjoy, but it's not. Look at how poofy it is up along the top edge there. Let me hold that up so you can see. See how poofy that is? 
you don't want it to be poofy like that. To stop it from being poofy, you're going to need to do what's called a top stitch. And a lot of people think, oh, that's just decorative. It actually stops your lining fabric from rolling out to the front, and it also gives it a really nice finish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that you can get your, your bag prepared for that top stitch, and then we'll do the top stitch, and then we're actually done. But you're not done until you do that. So just, yeah, do the, do the thing. Right, so back with the iron, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to help press this down. Now with this material, I actually could have gotten away with just pinning it or clipping it down. I didn't really have to worry about it, but for the sake of showing how you do this, um, you can go in with it upside down like this. You can also use a tailor's ham if you have it, though since this is a beginner's video, I didn't really want to harp on special ironing things. Now, if you did use um, the nylon uh, webbing such that I did, then I, I probably wouldn't iron too closely to it, but you just wanna kind of press down that seam and it, it helps get it kind of nice and, and prepped for you to top stitch it. And I'm just using the tip of my iron. A lot of the, um, a lot of irons have a precision tip at the end of them. That nice curved edge, I'm totally not gonna touch with my fingers because I'm not an idiot but just work your way around the back. The worst part's gonna be right here in those seams. You remember how I had you make it so that they faced opposite directions of each other? This is where you're gonna thank me. Just go ahead and put that down. And just again, use your precision tip. Now if you're using cotton webbing for your straps or you got adventurous and decided to be a, you know, an A++ student and, and make your own fabric straps, good for you. You can just <laughs> iron right over all that stuff. Now that everything is pressed and ready to go, you're going to, now you could just skip this part, but I still like to do it. I like to put clips down just to hold everything down and to make sure nothing's going to roll forward or wrinkle while I'm working with it in the machine. Really, again, it just depends on your machine. I do have a walking foot machine, so I don't have to worry about it as much, but if you don't have a walking foot machine, as most domestics don't, um, then you may find that it feeds the fabric on the top differently from the bottom, and that can lead to a little bit of wrinkling. So sometimes the clips will help with that. But this is just holding everything in place and making it easier on my life so I don't have to go drink after this. All right, one last step before you go back over to the machine and actually do the top stitch is you need to take your work, if you're using a flatbed and not the free arm of a domestic machine, and you need to turn the bag inside out. Again, if you're using a free arm, you don't have to do this. The idea is that you're going to be stitching from the exterior fabric facing up. So in a flatbed machine, that means you have to do it like this so you can feed it from this, from this angle. Okay, back at the machine, you're going to take your bag and start at one of the side seams. It's a little hard to see in here, but it's right here. And I like to just go ahead, and you're going to do the top stitch a quarter inch away. I'm gonna put my needle in about halfway to hold it there. And then I'm gonna take my, my stitch length, and I'm gonna bump it up to 4.5. So on a domestic machine, you can do four if you like. I tend to do 4.5 here on the industrial, but a top stitch should be a little longer. Not only is it necessary from a stand, from like a construction standpoint of making sure the lining doesn't roll out to the outside, but it also looks nicer. You wanna see those stitches, and if they're nice and tiny, then you can see more mistakes in the top stitching. So we'll just go with that. All right, so you're gonna stitch forward two and back to lock those in place. And again, quarter inch seam allowance when you're doing the top stitch. This is different than all the other seam allowances we did. Now we're just gonna stitch over. Do not back stitch over the webbing. And the other thing, the other reason why we left all that little excess sitting right there is so that now what you can do is you're double stitching over this. And so it's ensuring that your straps are stitched on the main seam and also in the top stitch, so you have extra security now. Take it easy going over that. 
and then just gently roll the work around. It's totally okay to manipulate and squish the bag as needed. Just make sure that you keep the straps out of the way. And you see that fella tried to come right in there and kind of to destroy my whole video because you know, straps all selfish in us. Again, slowly. And I would also advise if you have the functionality on your machine to just automatically make the needle go down halfway before kind of moving things around to please do that. Because if you don't and the needle is up or even partially up, then what you're gonna find out is that as you're moving things around, it kind of moves your fabric as well and your top stitch ends up being uneven. Now we're coming up on the seam. Now my machine can work over this very easily, not a big deal. But if you have a, a, a seam jumper, for example, um, you can put that right here in the front to kind of help the, the, the foot glide over that and not kind of like going up a hill and a run and then down a hill really fast and you're like, ah, and all of a sudden you're sewing your fingers. The other thing is you can honestly just reach over to the right of your machine and hand crank the wheel very slowly over that seam. Now you shouldn't have a problem with the materials that we had listed. However, just to get into the habit of it, you might want to try that. Just like that, gently over the seam. And then you can stitch the rest of the way. And as you're coming up on the other side, since this is decorative, make sure that you are lined up to where your initial start point was. You can go very slowly over this if you need to. And once you get there, go backwards two and forward two. Take your work out and trim it. Now, you don't want all of these. I've been really lazy with trimming the seams, but since this one is actually visible, you're going to want to go as close to the edge and snip those away. And speaking of, these are snips, in case you want to know what kind of scissors these are. Not necessary for this project. Just whatever cutting implement you want to use that's not a butcher knife or a machete. All right, we're all done, but it's still inside out. Well, if you used a flatbed. So if you used a flatbed and you had to go in, uh, inside out with the bag, just flip it back to the outside. Make sure you poke your corners out and do all that fun stuff. Of course, now you may be thinking, God, it's really wrinkly. Yes, it is really wrinkly. Not only did you have to birth the bag, but you also just had to like flip it inside out again and again and again. So usually the last step, what I tell people to do is to get the iron. And again, usually I have this on the ironing table, but the camera angle. You're gonna take the iron, and this is just cotton fabric, so you can just put the iron on top of it and just like do this. But I actually say to just hold it above and steam it a bit. I guess it takes, it takes this thing a while to steam up and I don't know why. Eventually we will get there. But you just wanna steam it and wave over it. And you can't just get a steaming machine if you'd rather and flip it over and do the same. Just hovering over it. Let it steam up a bit. I'm gonna press the button here and really steam it. Yes, yes, there we go. Love it. It's beautiful, beautiful. Just steam it, get all nice and moist. And then take it off and then just finger press it down to work out the wrinkles. So again, it's, it's different, <laughs> but it does work. So that's it. That's your first sewing project. So congratulations, you have made not only your first bag, but like your first awesome bag from a Fierce Kittens tutorial. So anyway, I hope that was really helpful. Um, please feel free to leave feedback below in the comments, like and subscribe if you really liked things. Um, and also I do stream live on Twitch on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays in the evening starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you ever want to pop by and ask more questions while I'm live, that's totally cool. Please, please do. I'd love to see you there. Thanks, guys. Bye.